Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Jumpstart. I am Jason Meyer, and apparently I'm in the wrong place again. But you know what? I bet you guys end up finding me, and we'll shoot it over to YouTube when we're finished. So Susan was able to find me. Excellent, 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 excellent. Good morning, Susan. So we'll give everybody just a second to get over here, and then we will get going. So this morning we're gonna look at a little pup and then we're gonna look at a couple of landscapes. And so since we don't have so much in the lineup, I'd like to slow down a little bit and um, spend a little more time, see if we can't uh, get into this a little bit easier. All right, so let's get set up here. Let's see, we need a dance partner, there we go. That guy looks good. Huh? We okay to hang out with this guy for a few minutes? <clears throat> Excellent. All right, Cindy's working her magic in the background, getting everybody where they need to be. So, thanks, baby. You're the best. The best. <clears throat> Okay, well, I was hoping to give, give everybody a chance to be here. We missed uh, Karen D's birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Karen D. Hope you're doing well, getting settled. And today is Miss Janie's birthday. So, I thought we should probably start with her since she's the birthday girl. <laughs> fur, 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 fur. That's right. Question is, who is this fur? Who is this fur? All right, Claudia found us. All right, looks like we're up and running, guys. Looks like we're up and running. Mr. Tom made it over, all right. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So what do you think? What's next on this one? Should we just tell her to frame it? Tell the birthday girl to frame it? Um, that would probably be my advice. That'd be my advice is to frame it. But if you really wanted to know what was next, what was next, this is where you have to really take a hard look. And this is also where you have to be really abstract. Now, again, doing a commission for a friend or something of their dog is is one thing but what we're talking about here is how aesthetically beautiful how powerful is it possible to make these things how powerful so since we're talking about power we should be looking in terms of power so let's see can we get it small enough to where there's no detail can we get it small enough where there's no detail and then when there's no detail, what part of that little postage stamp do you see? What part of that postage stamp do you see? No, 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 no. You're not supposed to be able to make anything out. Right? But you can still tell me, are you at one end of that or the other end? Or are you in the center? Where are you? Which end do you go to? Which side do you go to? Or do you go to one side or the other? Or are you in the middle? What do you guys think? Does anybody see it? Hey, that's right. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Mr. Cliff, good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. <laughs> all right, Janny. Tom says you're done. Sign it. Don't listen to all this stuff I'm going to talk about this morning. Claudia seconds it. All right, all right, all right. Miss Deb Kenny made it. Hello to Canada. Hello, Deb. Hope you're well. So we're just looking here and seeing what's powerful. 
Do you guys see that that sky, we go to that sky when we take all the detail out, that sky has as much pull as that pup. Man, and this is a cute dog. So how can we make that cute dog a little more powerful? Well, let's just do a little experiment here. What if we take exactly what she's got back there? Let's start here. And let's just take those values down. Right, she's got a nice, a lot of nice warm cool going on. So we want to try to capture some of that. But again, what if we did it just at that a darker value? What do you think that's going to do to our pup here? I think it's going to make him shine like a superstar. You could start entering him into entering into shows at that point, right? And when you first do it, it looks like, oh man, woof, oof, oof, no, no, no. But again, you've got to get enough of it covered. Right, because if there's spots of light and spots of dark, it's not going to read right. So I'm not going to do all the beautiful um, vibration of color she's got back there. I just want to look at the value. want to look at, would it... Would it serve us, would it serve this painting, would it serve this piece of art, would it serve to make this puppy look better if this was slightly darker back here? And so now what I want to do is let's go back to that postage stamp. Back to where you can't, but you can see, are you going to one end or the other or to the center? Well, now we're a little bit more into the center, aren't we? Yeah. And what if we wanted to say, yeah, you're in the center, but this guy really is the center of the universe. Well, could we do that same thing around the neck? Right, what if we took this out? And when I say take it out, what do I mean? I mean, push the value down push the visual impact down so that that nose and that eye and that the head is jumping way ahead of the rest of this. Okay, one more time, let's go down. Okay, again, what do you, right? Now this cute puppy, he's just not kind of a cute puppy that you glance at. He's a prize-winning show dog, right? When we talk about this dog, no, 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 no. We're not just mentioning him in passing. He is extremely important. Okay, and now... Janny, look at how great that face looks. You did such a great job on that. Man, we need to highlight that, right? We need to highlight that. All right, Claudia said, yeah, eyes go to the top. <laughs> Janny, you're too much, we're not too much. Happy birthday, kiddo. That was my first thought, but I second guessed myself, yeah. <laughs> okay there we go yeah it's hard because again we think more beautiful colors no that that's kind of a nasty color you got back there Jason that's a that's kind of yuck man I you know I don't think so I'm not gonna put that on my canvas but the yuck color in the background is exactly why the pup dog shines. That and the value. All right, good job, Janny. Good job, my friend. Now, now let's say, oh, I do, I see your point, but it's just too dull. We gotta liven this up a little bit. Well, okay, well the question's quantity, isn't it? 
the question is quantity. So how could we liven this up and make this pup a little bit more, I don't know, even more, right? Are we gonna move up in the, in the show schedule? Go up, go up to regionals? How might we do that? Well, again, let's just show you. Let's just show you, huh? We gotta pick what I wanna see. There we go. What I wanna see is this grass over here on the shadow side of the head. What I'm gonna do with that grass is I'm gonna let it have a little brightness. So again, but notice where this is and what it's gonna do. I would like to do this so it highlights that shadow there. And again, I'm not gonna get as good as fur as Miss Janie did, but uh, I don't wanna take that time. You see how we're kind of pulled over to that section now? And then if we took this one more step and then really made this separate the shadow from that background there so that Oops, I'm being a little clumsy here, but I think you see what I mean. So that when that shadow side's darker, there's less detail here, but we get a more, a big bang from the value here and the value there meeting. In other words, we're doing light and detail on this side. And then on this side, let's do value and contrast with less detail. And so, what am I talking about there, right? Do you guys understand what I just, well, very simply what I said is silhouette this, right? So that's a dark silhouette, which is not gonna have a bunch of detail against a lighter background. But again, I'm not gonna put a bunch of detail in that background. It's simply gonna be a, about getting a little kick off of this. And now, Watch, if that's too much, if that's too much, how do you handle it? Well, one thing you could do, whoops, whoopsie daisy. One thing you could do is make it smaller. Right, so I just gave you a dimmer switch. but a little bit more power there, right? And then it would be even more so if we took anything over here out. Boom, boom. Anyway, that may be a lot further than you want to take it, but I wanted to show you that little trick there. Because again, what we need is variety. What we need is variety. So what we've done is we've taken this away so that this is very, very, very special. We took this away, so again, so that this is very, very, very special. And then in that special part, we're gonna go our darkest dark, boom, our lightest light. And you know that one thing that we could even have more of in here, Janny, is I know there's a little bit of color in the, in the dog, we could have some bigger, flatter color spots or even darker, richer color spots. Right, to even get more power, like white is powerful and then color has a bit of power. So we have black or dark, we have our lightest light, we have detail, right? So there's big contrast, white, dark, white, dark, 
There's detail with the fur, the eye, the highlight, the nose, the mouth. And then over here, we're going to think contrast, silhouette, lack of detail, and lighter, kind of grayer, just to make that pop again with lack of detail. Okay, again, maybe a little too much. Maybe a little too much. I don't know. But uh, you got a winner, winner, chicken dinner, my friend. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Let's see if we can take some of that off. All right, let's do a little before and after and head on down the road. What do you say? Okay, again, beautiful job on, on the head, the face, and all of that. So, man, just take all the distractions away from that. So, this guys he's ready for Hollywood now. Forget the, forget the regional tours. He's ready for Hollywood. All right. Good job, my friend. <laughs> okay. There you go. You're welcome. So, Janie says, thank you, and thank you for all the birthday wishes. Love you guys. We love you, kiddo. We love you. Yeah, good. I'm so glad you were able to hear that. Light and detail versus value. Shat yeah, separating a little bit. A little bit, a little bit. Love it. Yeah, Susan. So, Janny, not taking anything away from you. I'm just trying to highlight everything you did. Susan loves it. Susan loves it. I think we all love it. Good job. Good, good job. Happy birthday. I hope you have a great day today. Okay, let's look at some landscapes, shall we? So, um, if I'm remembering right, I'm thinking this is a little bitty one, like a six by eight. So let's look here. Again, should we do our same experiment? Should we take this down to a postage stamp and see where our eye actually goes? Kind of forget about the subject matter. Let's just forget about the subject matter. Let's get all the detail out of there. It's just a speck. Right? And now we have the truth. Where do we go? Hey, Wendy found us. Wendy, Wendy. Beautiful painting. <laughs> oh, Jenny, thank you. Thank you. Have a good thing. Yeah, this is a, again, this is a little bitty study. Six by eight. Not a study. I think she's doing this for a painting, but scale scale matters here but again we're kind of going off to the top side a little bit aren't we can you guys see that can we see we got some good values we've got some good color we got some great things working in here so what I'm going to talk about more than anything is just orchestrating these things a little bit so you know all this power that's a lot over there in the corner. What if we could get you instead of focusing there, right, or letting your eye go there, we talked about the eye kind of coming through here a little bit and jumping up to here. So how would the feel of this painting change if we made sure to Kind of hold that light in there. Okay, so a couple things I'd like you to notice is one, I want you to notice that this is at a diagonal. Yeah, and it doesn't matter it's up on the corner. We can still talk and do all of this, right? Because you can see this no matter what the painting's doing. So we want to get a little diagonal movement on that. And then also the other thing I want to consider Let's consider, what if we make sure to hold that movement in away, away, even maybe push it down from here, but make sure that we stay away from the edges. That in other words, we, We make that we make that one small section there. Let's take this out too. 
right, if we give that one small section there all the power something like that let's see so let's just see let's just see so if it wasn't for that ugly red everywhere Right, so we're a little bit more held in there. Can you guys see that? Let's get this guy out of the way. What's he, he keeps getting in the way for? Down in front. Down in front. So, again, real nice colors and you've got some great values, but let's look at... Let's look at the shape. That's being left here. Okay, so there's a couple of, you've got some good ideas going, right? A simple side, simple, 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 to a complex side. Right, so you've got some good things. You've got clear value separations from foreground and background. But that levelness there, and then it also feels kind of equal spacing. Okay, so all of those things work to kind of if we're if we're painting like a river or flowing water to almost stagnate the water a little bit so as you do this i you know i think this is your first pass i'm i'm not sure i can't quite remember think about okay how can we maybe compress this light a little bit can we make it at a diagonal All right and maybe hold that cloud in a little bit and see what happens there. I think you're gonna find that the, it's much more dynamic. And I know when I started getting into the, you know, how much or how little, it always felt like that's not enough. That's not enough, that's not enough. But whenever I went to less and less and less, it continued to be more and more and more powerful. So just something to think about. Just something to think about there. Okay, so in, in that spirit then, with a little bit of adjusting the design, let's talk a little bit about the color then here. Because I know, um, I know you, you're capable of all of this, so this isn't above you. But this green here, we're gonna try to keep as much, no, we're gonna keep, I want you to do a little experiment here. Everybody doing the landscape, I want you to do a little experiment here. And so in the shadow, in your shadow of the foreground, We're going to have no white paint. Okay? Like right here, I can sense there's white in that. I can even sense white in there. Again, unless the, the colors and everything are just so off from the photo. Okay, so that includes the tree. So basically everything below this line will have no white. Okay, and what that'll do is that's gonna give a powerful separation from the foreground and the background. And then the other thing you wanna think about is any of the greens you do, it's a little bit hard to show here.
We don't want to be too highly chromatic or too much saturation in them. Okay, so that looks pretty good, but that might be more tree, right? If it's not too heavy, I don't know if that's too heavy. Let's see, we don't, we don't know, but it's a little warm and it's a little dark. So let's lighten it up and keep that warmness. See if we can't bring that yellowness a little closer forward. And even as I add this kind of warmth to the green here and the lighter spots, so we're darkening it down. So you don't necessarily want it all a single color either. But remember, we're going to have more yellow up front. And as it leaves, it's going to get less yellow. But on the warm side, that means it might go a little bit more orange right but that's dark I needed I went darker instead of lighter because we're going a little bit light oops see that looks like there's white in it looks like there's white in it uh -uh, too light okay so something like that might work for that again let's work that in there and again, I know you'll do that this later, but my main point was try to get no white, no white. And then it might move to a little more red. Oops, that's too high a chroma. Okay, but getting all the white out of that foreground will be very powerful for you. Okay, um, and again, I know this is the first thing, but even when you start, think about, okay, this part of the painting has no white, and so maybe even leave your white off your palette while you're painting that. And then when you get to the sky, think about, because it's tricky, it's tricky, we want those clouds to be white and gray, and they can be, and that sky to be blue. But I think we're losing a little power by making our light so big, so big. So what if we took this dark here? Let's just gray that off a little bit. All right, whoops, that seems heavy. That seems heavy, maybe. And so if the, Right, that may be too gray. Feels a little too gray to me. All right, let's see. So we might work a little bit like this, but what if some of those clouds threw shadows on these hills? What if some of these do you see how we can use cloud shadows on the hills to change that square shape into a more dynamic light shape? Okay, you see how that's a little more compelling to want to go back there and investigate, right? So that shape, that shape, so what are shapes for our paintings? Well, shapes on our paintings are like menu items at the restaurant, right? And a shape like this is gonna, oh, that's my favorite, let's go there. I'm starving for that shape. And then in the sky, again, what if there was just more gray clouds instead of blue? And what if we made that just slightly darker here? Yeah, and so you see how now the shadows on the hills and the grayness in the sky let us release off. And again, I can see there's really thin paint. So this is very early on. So I think this is a great start. You've got some good pieces, but now let's move those pieces around and we even not let that color go off the edge there all 
And then also maybe there's some lighter gray clouds that might come through here as well. Then for that blue, what if we all right, just take it down a little bit and gray it off. Blue is tricky it, because things can be really, really gray and still appear pretty blue. Okay, that overshot there. Overshot there. Hmm. Right, so if that's too heavy, I don't know. I think that might work, but we'll go a little bit lighter with that. Whoa, somebody dragged something somewhere. Not cool. Not cool. All right, well, let's try that. That uh, seems too dark to me. But let's get it all covered up and see. Okay, well, it definitely makes that white cloud pop, doesn't it? Right? But if it's a little too much, again, let's just edge a little lighter, a little grayer. Oh my goodness, who's in charge of this thing? Let's see, so that's darker, grayer. Ooh, that's slightly lighter. Lighter and maybe a little bit more. There we go. Ah, so I think that would feel a little bit better. Okay, so make sure you get those shapes really dynamic really dynamic and the last thing we'll, we'll do here is again what if we could hold that cloud in with those some of those grays right even just keeping it from running off the edge there let's see let's see okay so we talked about taking keeping the white white paint out of everything below the tree line so let's keep the white paint out of everything below the tree line. And then let's make sure that we get a little better shapes on some of those lights in the background. That light and that color. Man, whoo. I think you might have a sellout show, Jan. You might have a sellout show. So good job, good job. You've got, you're getting those values. Um, I'm liking a lot what we see, but let's orchestrate those shapes a little bit. And it might seem like, whoa, that's just not enough light. You'll be surprised. Less is more. Less is more. Okay. All right. Miss Jan, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Should we watch that replay video here? Why not? Let's watch the replay video. Give me half a second to get a sip of water. And we'll go on to our next landscape. Well, that was fun. That was fun. Okay, so as we go into this uh, third one here, I'd like to remind everybody I'll be taking over at Art Central Slow today at 1 o'clock for the Art Central Art Supply Store here in San Luis Obispo, Central Coast of California. And I'm going to be talking about gambling mediums. So if you got any questions on mediums, how you use them, what they're for, what, how do I get this kind of paint mark, how do I get this kind of sheen, I want to work on my paint for three days, what medium do I use, I need this dry by tomorrow, what do I do, I'm allergic to all the solvents, what do I do if I'm allergic to solvents, we got you covered on all that. So make sure to check, check us out at 1 o'clock on Instagram at Art Central Slow. One o'clock Pacific Standard Time, that is. All right. So our friend Miss Peggy. Nice, Peggy. Nice. Good value separation. Where are we going? Right? Where are we going? So let's help out a little bit here. What I'd like to do is let's take this background out of the equation. And this isn't, uh, this is kind of a, it's going to pixelate, so I didn't want to edit it out but we can just mark it out here. We can mark it out. 
Okay. Janny. Ah, oh, thanks, Janny. Um, so if you do have an Instagram thing, Art Central will uh, have it on in their story when it's done. So if you have any confusion, like, you know, how do I get those really thin light marks to start with? How do I get those thick, juicy marks? You know, sometimes when you can't do that, it's just the medium you're using. You need this medium at this stage and that medium at that stage. It's as simple as that. Okay, so should we postage size this? Let's see what we've got. See what you got? Yeah, look, Peggy. Claudia says, very nice. Good value, good value. Right? Look, what do we have? Do we see this kind of V in there? Do we see a V? Let's see if I can mark on it when it's this small. So, right, this is what I'm seeing right here. Okay, so I'm going to take that red away, and you tell me if that's not what you see. Oops. Oops. Man, who's the novice level up here? There we go. That happened pretty quick. So, all right, you know where I was. So, do you, do you see that that's actually what we see? Right? Well, what if it's upside down? What do we see? Well, it doesn't ever change, right? The eye works as it works. It sees the, va the light and the value as it sees the light and the value. It's going to go towards the light and the color. So what that means as painters is rather than trying to copy a scene, what we need to do is design, design these lights and colors. Now, for any of the uninitiated, it takes a little while before you're able to get these values to pop like this, right? So what she's doing great at is, man, we're going right to that green. So just like in the last one, what we could talk about is, okay, how could we orchestrate some of these shapes a little differently, some of these value patterns to have a more compelling canvas. Okay, so a couple of things I'd like to point out and uh, talk about or, or show you what I'll be messing with today is a straight line, even a partial straight line, is very powerful. So that is some strong, strong movement. Right? And we do have a nice thing to hold us there. But part of the problem with this is it, it's almost like an arrow going like that. It's just a little too powerful. So I'm going to work to disguise that just a little bit and maybe level it off. And I know it's frustrating because you're like, you just told me that in the foreground, your angles are going like this. And that is absolutely true. That is absolutely true. And then you said in the background, you're going to lay down a little bit more. And that just says near to far. That is all absolutely true. But, but we have to ask ourselves, is this foreground playing the same role it was playing when I told you that. And the answer is no. The function of this foreground is the silhouette. Okay? In other words, with this dark diagonal like that, it's so powerful 
that it gives this foreground too much power. Okay, we're having to concentrate on not sliding off the mountain rather than concentrating on all this. So conceptually what we're doing is we're going to stabilize this a little more. Yes, we're going to make it interesting and everything with some coming and goings of these trees. Right? And since we kept this more stable, what that means is we've got to use the shadows. Shadows of the green rather than those trees. Now that shadow's too dark. How do I know it's too dark? Because it's melting in with the trees. This still needs to be distance. Okay, so I hope you guys can see that work. This is some pretty subtle things, but unless you understand it, it's impossible to know what tool to use at what time. Okay, so let's play with some of this and see if this thing doesn't become a little bit more stable and that what we're looking at doesn't become a little bit more interesting or compelling, right? Let's see if we can't compel somebody to buy this, Peggy. Let's see if we can make it so compelling that they want to buy it. All right, how are we doing? Okay, so this is the last painting up today. And so it looks like me and my mouth may actually make it in under an hour. Let's see how that goes. See if we can pull this off. See if we can pull this off. So I love that I don't see any white in here, right? I love that, right? And that green is too much. At least it appears too much against all that red. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll keep the same value and similar um, chromas even and slightly change so the question is, is this dark enough to let that background shine? It appears so, huh? So even though it looks like I'm a little lighter than you are here, and I am, and that's so that our trees can go a little darker without getting being too, um, too dark. And again, so let's just push this up a little bit. We're gonna squeeze that green. Squeeze that green. Okay, woof, woof, woof. Man, did anybody order a straight line of trees? Anybody order a straight line of trees? You guys know that's a no-no. You guys know better than that. So let's see if I can't fix that up. And so if that ever happens to you and you don't need to get bigger with those dark trees, Get your paper towel out. Get your palette knife out and start scraping back on some of it. Give us some sky holes here and there. Think about the shapes you're making. Think about the shapes you're making. All right, but in this case, we don't have all that much time. So this isn't about me getting the great shapes, but showing you what's next. So here, like, if I could throw this back into shadow a little bit, that seems a little purple. It seems a little, uh, uh, slightly light. Okay, it seems slightly heavy. Mm, slightly light, but we're not gonna fight this for too much, because I've got a timeline. Ah! All right, here we go. Here we go. And then I, d I would like to level this off a little bit more here. Try to take a little bit of that diagonal out. So maybe just let that tree go up and there we go. And then let's just go ahead and take this edge off here. So let's look at the difference in that green shape. OK, 
Okay, so you see what I'm doing? I'm trying to make that thing that we're looking at a little bit more dynamic by throwing the green and shadow next to it. It really doesn't appear too shadowy to me. It doesn't appear shadowy and it's bothering me. Here we go, this will be something better. I don't know if the color's right, but we can see that green shape better. Right, stands out even more. And then, if we had a nice clean white cloud poking through here. Okay, so the question is, is this more dynamic than we had before? Right? And then the last thing I think we need to do to almost finish this would be to just make sure that this shape is bonsai worthy. Right? This we need just some sort of fantastic, fantastic, interesting shape here for this tree. Because that silhouette needs to carry some weight. And so we need a strong, a strong silhouette here. I don't, I can't promise you I'm going to be able to get it in a short time, talking while I'm painting, but I think you catch my drift. Okay, so see where we're going. Now guys, look, one of the reasons we have such a hard time with this is you could watch this and say, hey, that looks great. Yeah, I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay, let's go. But when you get to your canvas, when you get to your canvas, ah, what are we doing here? Here we go. That doesn't seem like enough. Because look how much you're leaving out. Right? We want, it's like we crave more and more. It's like a bag of potato chips. Right? Instead of eating a handful or something. Man, the bag's empty. Ugh. Ugh, I don't feel so good. This is the same thing, less is more. Less is more. And so to that point, I'm gonna do one final thing here that we, I don't usually do. We don't usually do this. A little before and after. Don't usually do this, but let's, let's think about this question on a David LaFell. Oh, is it not going to let me do it? May not let me do it. Oh, there it is. Where does your eye go? Oh, I hear you guys yelling. Oh, man. Quit yelling. Jeez. Be nice to me, guys. Be nice. Whew. Tough crowd here. I hear you yelling. You just finished showing me... You just finished showing me that you needed an interesting light shape. And now you're showing me that, what the? Well, yeah, but is that really the overall light shape? Well, let's think about that. Let's think about that for a minute. First off, what do you see here? Well, I want you to put your painter's hat off on. I don't want you to be a museum visitor walking through and seeing this on the wall. I want you putting your painter's hat on. And as a painter, I want to... What are you... What do you see?
Well, we talk a lot about a number four dark. Do you see a number four dark on there? What is the shape of that number four dark? We talk a lot about a number three gray. What is the shape of the number three gray in this painting? We talk a whole lot about a number two color. Oh, quit yelling, I hear you guys. We don't talk about it, you do. You will be. You're gonna be so sick of number one, number two, number three, and number four that it's gonna be coming out of your mouth and you're not even realizing it because of the deep, deep, deep implications, right? The first implication is we gotta see it simply so that when we're overwhelmed by the beauty, we can still see what's going on. And where does that bring us? We had a number two color. What's left? Four, three, two, what could pot, where, which direction could this possibly be going? Number one. What would be number one here? A number four dark. Now, no, it is not all the same. Because that is definitely heavier than that. But remember, our number four dark isn't a particular numerical value. It's a spectrum. And as long as it stays in its lane and not goes veering into, not going veering into our number three, now again, we miss the shadows of the dark. We'll go back to those number four. But you see the number three? The number three is what? Is it held? Is it held by the number four? Remind me again, what's the pattern for glow? So we go four, three. Where's our color? Where's our number two? Right? A touch of blue, a touch of blue with all of the yellow. Do we have a touch of green? Yes, we do. Is that a yellow green? Yes, it is. Do we have a touch of red? It's a little bit dark, but yes, we do. So we have a touch of like all these colors, but mainly this is yellow blue color. Right now, when I'm saying color, for those of you who aren't aware, I'm talking our high chroma. So we've got a dark, we've got a gray, we've got a high chroma, number two value. Which leads us to what? Number one. See, those are not even really number ones. They read as number ones. How much of this canvas 
how much of this canvas has got light and color on it. So this is reading lit. This is reading lit, but it's not our definition of light, which is a number one value. This is lit, but it's a number three value, this tabletop. And why we're sitting here upside down, tell me if you think this is darker, richer, to lighter, interrupted by shadow, grayer. Right, so that darker, richer to lighter, grayer, you don't have to run through all of the hues. You can do that at a very gray thing. Now, I want to remind you guys, so look, this is basically the entire painting right here. Right? This is the, just about the entire painting. Right, we've got a few highlights sticking off the side up there. But what I want to do is So look at how much number four value is in there. This is mostly dark, dark, dark canvas. Yet, yet when you look at it, right, it's the sense of light that you experience. Okay, look at that, and I found myself. I looked up at 8.57, at 8.57, which means, woohoo, we made it. We made it. Let's see, how about a little dance, some do -si do There we go. All right, so I hope everybody got a lot out of today. So we've been talking about those big value patterns and seeing those before we see any individual thing. Great big value patterns. All right, so a quick reminder, today is Wednesday, which means I'll be taking over the Instagram account of at Art Central Slow, at, at Art Central S-L-O. I'll be taking that over and going over mediums today at one o'clock. So you're not gonna wanna miss that. We're gonna do it all. Any questions on mediums, be here. They've hooked me up with all kinds of different kinds. We're gonna sample them and experiment with them and show you what it does. Uh, tonight, there'll be Masterworks at seven o'clock on YouTube. Uh, tomorrow morning, another morning jump start, but we're gonna head back over to YouTube tomorrow, unless I hit a wrong button again. And uh, we'll got Sketch Club to finish the day and that'll be here on Facebook on Thursday at 7. A lot of info, more info than I keep in my head. So anyway, you can always check out jasonmeyer.com to find what's going on and my lovely wife Cindy can hook you up with anything you need too. All right guys, thanks so much. Really appreciate you. Happy birthday Sue, Janie and Karen. Looked like we got some birthday mix-ups, but happy birthday to all of you guys. We'll see you guys soon. Hope to see you guys at one at Art Central on Instagram. That's specific standard time. Bye, everybody.